So there are many different ways to decarbonize the European energy system. And of course, district heating will play an important role. Heating and cooling consumes about half of EU's final energy demand. And district heating is one way to make the transition happen at one time in terms of technology for a lot of consumers. How district heating helps create a smarter, better integrated energy system. And there's so much happening around that right now that I think it's really a, a useful time for us to be coming forward with, with a clear message about how we see the future. We need to now come about, really look at all the local needs, to reduce the needs and to adapt then uh, the energy uh, supply to those needs. Well, we already have a district heating network, um, uh, which is from uh, just after the Second World War. Um, so, so we have got a starting point and knowledge of, of district heating. And what we did is we looked at the energy potential in the region and we found we've got a lot of heat, residual heat from the industry, geothermal heat. Um, and we have actually a lack of electricity and biogases. So um, uh, for heating the houses from an energy perspective, it makes sense to use it. Uh, and we also found that for the existing building stock, especially in dense urban areas, is the cheapest solution. So that's why we look at ways of, of uh, transforming the building stock from natural gas to district heating. Based on what the final energy needs will be, the cities, the regions, the member states will have to look at different solutions. There will be probably individual solutions uh, available, there will be solutions available that focus more on district heating, some will focus more on district cooling, and we need all of them for Europe. Genuinely, fully decarbonized district heating by the middle of this century will help. It will make a, a real tangible difference in solving what is obviously an existential problem for all of us. The future lies into the absolute diversity of all the different mix, of all the different sectors, coupling we have discussed this morning. We will need to go extremely, extremely precise to each of the different uh, needs at local level. The EU is helping already quite a lot. Uh, research and development funds are being placed there. We have a framework uh, at the electricity sector that will help decarbonize the electricity sector and that the EU could help a little more by breaking down barriers between regulated systems so that the coupling element, the district heating systems, can do their work. You need to have on, on a national or international or EU level uh, uh, an overall strategy and, and, and see where uh, international rules and regulations are needed. Uh, and, and try to agree upon uh, some set of basic rules, avoid waste of energy, use it as high value as possible, and then try to boil it down to national levels and local levels. Now, on, on a local level, we don't have enough, enough instruments, regulatory nor financial, to, uh, to transform the city, because it's either too expensive or it's too unclear what options there are or are not. For the end consumer what is important is the heat that they get and the quality of living that they get. So you need different ways of getting there, you will need different energy carriers. The Commission of course is looking into all possible options and uh, we need, as discussed today, a lot of action on the local level. I think that the regions and municipalities will have to decide how much and what types of energy they will need in order to become carbon neutral by 2050. So it's really a bottom-up process that we're looking at now. We are not as uh, so many actors uh, that can uh, really drive the debate on the energy policy at EU level, which have this local angle. So I really need the euro and power partners so that we can really try to uh, not, not only advocate but to be much more uh, visible as the uh, main actor for the energy systems in the future.